Herein, I present you with five interesting facts about video games and food. Okay, I lied. This first one is not technically about video games, but have you ever wondered why slot machines make you line up pictures of fruit instead of, I don't know, numbers or shapes or something? The reason is because the very first slot machines were developed by the Bell Fruit Gum Company and actually dispensed pieces of gum instead of cash. You would line up three lemons to get lemon-flavored gum or whatever. This is also the reason why slot machines use bells and bars as common symbols too. Bells, because that was the company name, and bars because the Bell Fruit Gum Company's logo was just an ugly black bar with words on it. Talking of fruit, how about all that fruit you have to collect for points in platform games? Why is that a thing? Well, once again, the answer lies with our old friends, the Japanese. See, in Japan, fruit is ridiculously expensive. I don't know exactly why that is, I think it might be some sort of cartel price-fixing thing, but I remember when I was in Japan, to just buy a single apple would often set you back at least two bucks. You can even buy special fruit gift boxes to give to friends on special occasions. This one here cost $85. So that's why you're often rewarded with fruit in Japanese games. Japanese culture just thinks of fruit as a much more impressive and desirable prize than we do. Speaking of fruit prizes, have you ever seen this thing in a game? In a lot of Japanese games, it's the ultimate fruit prize, but a lot of people in America have no idea what it's supposed to be. When Pac-Man came to the United States in the 1980s, a lot of people thought maybe it was supposed to be a grenade or just a really badly drawn pineapple. But no, it's supposed to be a honeydew melon, which the Japanese consider the most luxurious and elite of the fruits. Honeydew melons are so coveted in Japan, I once saw them being sold in a high-end uh, department store in these little boxes lined with silk. They were going for about $80 each. So yeah, that's why Yoshi loves them so much. Okay, and one last Japanese thing. Do you know what this one is? It is a Japanese snack that is called onigiri. It is a sort of triangular blob of cold rice that has like chopped up uh, fish or vegetables inside. In Japan, onigiri is kind of a generic symbol for food. So in a lot of video games, it's something that you collect to regain health points or whatever. This can cause cultural problems when these games are released in America, however, and so it's been interesting to notice over the years how references to onigiri are often changed when the games are released stateside. In Hey You Pikachu, the onigiri became a cupcake. In Tamagotchi, they turned the onigiri into a hamburger. In Legend of the Mystical Ninja, it became a pizza. So if you're playing a Japanese game and the character is chowing down on something you'd expect to find at the food court of Mall of America, chances are he was supposed to be eating onigiri. And speaking of American junk food, now I'm sure we all know that the 1990s were a golden era for junk food themed video games commissioned by some of our favorite corporations. There were McDonald games and 7-Up games and even Cheetos games. But then there were other games that never intended to be empty corporate shills, but merely had empty corporate shilldom thrust upon them, usually for financial financial reasons. Take the obscure 1990s NES Capcom title Kamen no Ninja Hanamaru. The Capcom people wanted to release it in America, but first they needed some money, so they made an alliance with Domino's Pizza, and a game that was supposed to be about a ninja became a game about the Noid. Then there was the 1992 platform game Zool, made by a small British studio called Gremlin. Now the Gremlin people clearly figured that Zool was going to be the next big thing, which is why they released the game on every single platform simultaneously. How did a small company afford that? Simple, they signed a sponsorship deal with the Chupa Chups Lollipop Company. This is why Zool, the super cool ninja from the future, lives in a candy world and why no one played his games. Which brings us to perhaps the most infamous example of this sort of thing of all, the European version of the Biker Mice from Mars SNES game, which was sponsored by Snickers. Yes, that's right, a video game that was supposed to be a giant commercial for a television show ended up being a giant commercial for a candy bar too. If I didn't know better, I'd say it's almost like the Biker Mice from Mars was not a strong enough franchise to sustain a game on its own. Nah. But what people find most offensive about this is that a game called Biker Mice from Mars missed the obvious candy bar tie-in. So hopefully you enjoyed those fun facts about video game food. Be sure to tune in next week in which we talk about video game drinks, and I solve the eternal mystery of whether or not that coffee shop full of drunks in Final Fantasy III was originally supposed to be something else. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe to see more of my stuff. If you click on the picture below, you can see the pilot episode of One Up and Adam, a video game chat show I'm working on with my good pal Max. In this one, we talk all about Yoshi-themed puzzle games and share our various insights. If you like this video and like video game trivia in general, be sure to check it out. I promise you won't be disappointed.